Hello everybody and welcome to this video. This is part 3 of my upgrading to a NAS series and in this part I will be going over the final setting up of the NAS. I'm going to give you a bit of backlog, a bit of a backstory on what happened before part 3. When I first set up the NAS and I went to put my drives into the NAS, I accidentally dropped one of my storage drives and it was my main primary storage drive. When I dropped it, I dropped it from about 2 feet off the ground and it was turned off but because it's a hard drive the internals, the platters, the header that reads from the disc, they are extremely delicate and me dropping it actually corrupted the drive beyond repair and when you went to turn it on it sounded like a siren. Now luckily I did have backups of the data that was on the drive or the majority of the data. There were still a few files that I hadn't backed up and they were like major files so I, I went through the effort and time and expense again to uh, send the drive off to be recovered because those files that weren't backed up they were irreplaceable files. I would not be able to recreate those files. So I sent it off for repair. They did a proper diagnosis on the drive. Now I don't know the exact details of what's wrong with the drive or what went wrong with the drive. I got told it was like a severe corruption uh, which like caused bad sectors and that most of the data was lost beyond recovery. Now when I heard that I didn't really know how to process it but luckily the data that was unrecoverable I already had backed up and the data that I didn't have backed up was successful fully recoverable so in the end I didn't lose any data at all and I actually have that very drive here this is a drive that I dropped and it corrupted but luckily due to me having backups and the data that was recovered I haven't lost any data those irreplaceable files are now back on a stable medium and as of this recording they are actually in the NAS and already set up but I just thought I would re-record the intro to give you a little bit of background on what happened and it just so happens that I were to drop the drive between me taking it out of my hard drive dock to put it into my NAS. Like the timing and the coincidence of that is just uncanny I guess. Uh, but yeah I did buy another drive so that way I do have two drives and there'll be more on that in this video. But that's basically what happened in between me recording part two and me recording part three. So with all of that said let's get on to the actual video. So what is inside my NAS? I have what is now my primary storage drive which is this two terabyte Western Digital Red Drive, which I'll just put over there. And then as my like backup of the data that's on there, I've had to pull out one of my original backup drives that I had before I even got my NAS and the Western Digital Reds. So let's get into the unboxing of my new drive. So yeah, it should just arrive how it did before which is kind of what it is. Here is my new drive. Let me just put the box down on the floor. And here is my replacement, well not replacement, my new Western Digital Red. So before I actually get into the unboxing and installing of that one, I need to remove this drive. Where's my little screw thing that I put under so it can support? Hang on, I'll be back here. In case you wondered what I meant by my little screw thing to support, because I never actually finished sentence, was as this is a 2.5 inch drive, there is a gap between the hard drive and the uh, surface top, so if I were to unscrew it, it would like drop down onto the surface. Now even though it's turned off, you don't want to be dropping hard drives. I literally know from experience when I dropped my Western Digital Red, I dropped that drive and even though it was turned off, it's completely corrupted and beyond repair. So what I do is I simply get my little screw thing and just put it below the drive and now the drive is rested on something so it won't drop and impact the surface below and the, these screws are weird because this brilliant never mind I'll get it after recording so there I've unscrewed that drive so there's my original backup which I'm going to put back in the portable hard drive enclosure that I got and here is the new Western Digital Red. Now I do need these little clip things so I can clip this hard drive in there. I've gone and gotten these little clips and now let's unpackage this hard drive. So this is just a Western Digital Red 2TB, same as that drive. Uh, and now I'm just going to 
sort of wriggle it out of its packet. If you've got a 3.5 inch drive, which is uh, these wider ones, if you have a small 2.5 inch drive like this one, then you do need to screw it in via the screw holes that I unscrewed to take that one out. But with a 3.5 inch drive, you can either screw it in. Here you get a bag of screws. There are two different sizes. There are smaller screws and bigger screws. The smaller screws are these ones for 2.5 inch drives and the bigger screws are for 3.5 inch drives. But you don't actually need to use the screws because you can just put these uh, little clip things on and as you can see they've got like points on them and those points that you see simply just clip onto the plastic go through the plastic and then just clip into the screw holes of the drive like that and that's what holds your drive in there so now if I just put this drive in yep put the holes aligned and then just clip this on like that and then just clip it on at the other side like that and once you've got both the clips in there's your drive installed so yes because i now have two identical drives i need to mark each one so that's now disc one so this one will be disc two because before there was quite a difference so i could easily identify them but now they are the same and i'm not going to mess about remembering the serial codes or whatever so i've now marked them so that one's disc one as you can see there and this one's disc two now i don't think i covered this in the original nas video but you can see up here the bay actually has which number drive it is so if you plug a drive into that drive it will be recognized as disc one that one will be disc two that one disc three and that one disc four so i'm going to plug disc one back into disc one Push it in until it clicks like that and then for disc 2 I'm just going to plug a uh, plug disc 2 in like that and there's both of the drives now installed. So now you've seen me install the blank drive I need to go ahead and initialize that drive. I will just say this is not the first time recording this part of the video therefore the Western Digital Red is already set up and initialized but as the setup and initialization of any drive is identical I've just gone and got a blank drive and put that in the NAS for the purpose of this recording. So what you are looking at here is Synology's own disk station manager which is their custom OS that runs on their NASs and their routers and possibly a few more of their products. Now as you can see here it is only detecting volume volume 3. Volume 1 and 2 are my Western Digital Reds that I've taken out for the purpose of this recording and I have installed a drive in uh, Bay 4 which should be detected as volume 4 but it's not yet initialized so it won't be detected. So the first thing I want to do is head into Storage Manager. If you don't have the icon on the background here go up to the top left in the main menu and then click on Storage Manager then that should open Storage Manager like this and then as we need to create a new volume in the left column I need to go to volume volumes click on create now here when it's asking me to choose a mode I'm just going to leave it set as quick because that works perfectly fine for my users now I'm going to go ahead and click next as we can see here it has detected disk 4 now it's automatically named disk 4 because it is in bay 4 of the NAS which is the blank drive that I need to initialize it's detected it and it is one terabyte as that is a drive I need to initialize I'm going to leave the tick box selected and then click on next it's saying that all data will be erased on the hard drive which is perfectly fine by me it's a blank drive there's no data on it anyway but if you are putting in a drive that does have data on it make sure you do back up that data before you initialize the volume because it will erase everything on the drive but as I've put in a blank drive there's no data on it anyway so yes go ahead and raise it now it's asking to perform a disk check now if you want to you can select no but I'm personally just going to leave it on yes and then I click next and now uh, I typically use the BT RFS setup you can use the ext4 but again i have no experience using that so use it at your own risk i just use btrfs because that works fine for my users so i'm going to select that click next now it's asking for a description for the drive so let's just say in this scenario this drive that i'm initializing will be my backup drive so i'm just simply going to call it my backup drive and then click next and now it's just here to confirm your settings if everything looks good like it does then go ahead and click apply but if something doesn't look right you can always go back through the process and sort it out then but if everything looks good and it does to me I'm just going to click apply it's now going to save the settings and it's going to go about creating that fourth volume so it's just applying the settings now 
and as we can see there where it's actually come back as volume one but that drive is in the fourth bay the reason why it's come back as volume one is because there is currently no volume one in the system so any new initializations will automatically pick up volume one so if i were to create another volume it would be identified as volume two and if i were to create a third volume in this instance we already have a third volume so the third initialization if if I were to create one would then be identified as volume 4. But that is simply how you go about creating a new volume in Disk Station Manager. So I've decided that I'm going to put the NAS down in this corner. Now you may be thinking it seems a bit close to the radiator but as heat rises the heat will rise and down here it's like you can't even feel the heat from the radiator down here at all so I'm not worried about uh, the possibility of the power brick melting or the cable melting or something like that due to it being too hot and near a radiator. I will point out that the NAS is already set up and I have been using it here for about a week now and it is works perfectly I've got no complaints about it I just put it here temporarily because I was a bit limited on cable length and not knowing where to put it but it works perfectly fine down here and I'm happy with it here uh, so I'm going to put it down here permanently I don't want the NAS directly on the carpet so temporarily I've cut out this piece of cardboard but ideally I don't really want it on the cardboard either uh, what I do want it on is a block of wood so I've taken measurements and I've decided that I'm going to cut out a block of wood for the NAS. So from the wall we are looking at 18 inches like from the wall coming out which will put it in direct alignment with this box so that way it will look nice and even and then the width between this wall here and uh, this side of the box well this bit because it sticks out a bit at the bottom uh, but yeah between that wall and the bottom of the box it's going to be 20 inches wide so now I'm going to head down to the garage see if I can find a block of wood that I can like cut up for this project so I've just found this bit of wood which is the same bit of wood I cut my network board from and just out of pure a coincidence it is I don't know if you'll be able to see that but it is exactly 18 inches wide so I only need to make one straight cut that's uh, 20 inches across and then I should be able to just cut it out but firstly I do need to measure 20 inches across so that is can not do that please thank you also if you can hear birds and traffic in the background then yeah because there's birds and traffic in the background So now all I need to do is just draw that line down there and then see about cutting it out. Now I can just cut it down there and then there's the NAS board mate. Ideally you'd want to take like cut halfway and then cut the other halfway. Jigsaw, bolts, earplugs. Let's begin. Okay, here we go. Quite a bit of chip out, but I'm not really that worried about that to be honest. And here we go. There's that. So now I just need to, well, just file down the edges. So I shall get on to doing that. Okay, so here is my block of wood for the NAS. Now I'm just going to tidy up and then I'll get back inside and put the NAS onto the board. As you have just seen, I have been and cut out this block of wood and now I'm just going to install it, I guess you could say. Uh, the NAS is turned off at the moment, so unplug the ethernet, unplug the power brick and carefully lift the NAS up here. Now I can remove the cardboard. Oops, it's okay, everything's fine. And then put that there and then push the box back into place until it stops like that. And then I can just put my NAS back down here, plug it in the power, and there's the power and the ethernet plugged back in. So there is my little NAS setup. That is where it's going to stay for the next however long. 
Now regarding these cables, like I've already said, I'm not concerned with them being near the radiator. I'm perfectly happy with these cables just trailing across the floor, because as you can see they are right beside a wall so no one's going to trip over them. But what I think I might do eventually is uh, move this like coil, organising coil, like up here. So that way I'll just have two wires beside each other that I can then sleeve to make them look uh, better than just, well, two cables trailing along the floor with like a organization coil. So yeah, I think that will probably be the next thing I'll do with the NAS. I won't do it in this video because I don't even have a cable management like tube or anything. But yeah, cable management is something that I feel I could do at some point, but it's not like high on the priorities list. And as you heard, my NAS beeped, which means that it's fully online, all the discs are now online so you can access them, but I don't even want it on so I'm just going to turn it off. This is a Synology NAS, I believe it's the same for all of their NASs, uh, but just in case it isn't, this is a DS415+, Plus, which you should know because it's in the tie so I just press and hold the power button for 5 seconds until it beeps and then it will shut down. So I just press and hold it until it beeps and then it will shut down in about 10 seconds after it's done all of its shutting down scripts and whatever else it does because it is essentially a computer so it does have a uh, like an off script an off sequence to terminate all of the services and things like that and then when all the lights go out like you just saw the NAS is now turned off what I have created here is a simplified version of my network setup and the speeds I get both to and from the NAS. The top image is a simplified version of my network setup that I have with the NAS. I have a Cat6 Ethernet going from my computer into a gigabit router with Wi-Fi and then another Cat6 cable going from the router to the NAS. As I am using both a gigabit router and Cat6 cables which are gigabit certified, that means I should be able to get gigabit speeds between my computer and the NAS. The middle image is the transfer speeds I get moving files from my computer to the NAS. For this test, I created a 5GB test folder comprising of 5 1GB files and then cut and pasted that folder from my computer to the NAS. As you can see, I am maxing out the bandwidth of the Ethernet cable, getting 112 megabytes per second, but the speed does occasionally dip when moving large files to the NAS, but since I have been using the NAS, I have not yet encountered a slowdown that has disrupted my workflow. The bottom image is showing the speeds I get moving files from my NAS to my computer. For this, I cut and pasted that same 5GB test folder from my NAS back to my computer and as you can see, I am once again maxing out the Ethernet bandwidth at 112MB per second. And with that, I shall conclude the video. So in this video, it has been the setup of my NAS, but due to the events that happened in between part two and part three, it's been a bit more than just a setup. It's been more an explanation of what happened than due to those events, I needed to buy a new hard drive. So what you've actually seen is a unboxing, installation and initialization of the new drive. And I have also showed you where I have put my NAS and explained to you why I have put it there and a few little improvements I could do in the future such as better cable management but like I said that's not a priority at the moment the NAS works fine but what was a priority was something to put the NAS on because I didn't want it on the carpet so temporarily I cut out a bit of cardboard with intentions to measure out the area and then go and cut a bit of wood once I had found one and as seen in the video I have since found a piece of wood and I have also cut it down to the dimensions that I previously measured and now I have installed it down there as of this camera's position my NAS is down there on the floor and yeah I feel that's all the setup I can show you because that is the current setup and I have no intentions of changing it anytime soon so if you enjoyed this video give it a like if you didn't then dislike it also consider subscribing to avoid missing out on future videos but that's it for this video so thank you for watching but yeah that's it for this video thank you for watching ow wipe my hand on the tripod <laughs>